Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today is the big giveaway. We're gonna pick the winner for the free Steam Deck. This has been donated to my channel by dqupgrade.com. They have an eBay store and a website that sells upgrades for your Mac Pros, the 5,1, 6,1, and 7,1. They gave me a free Steam Deck to give away to one lucky subscriber, and the winner is Thomas Wilbur. Congratulations. Send me an email at maxsoundsolutions at gmail.com with your mailing address, and I will ship this as soon as I can. Okay, so let's move on to the video. Today's video is going to be installing Martin Lowe's Open Core Package from scratch on a Mac Pro 5,1 with Monterey 12.7.4. I will probably make a video another day installing Sonoma with OpenCore Legacy Patcher, but Martin Lowe's package only goes up to Monterey, and that's what I've been using for years now. And now that I've got a completely cleaned out Mac Pro 5 comma 1, because all my components went into my Mac Pro 7 comma 1, I thought I'd make this video because people have been asking me, can you show us how to install OpenCore from scratch? And that's what this video is, so let's get to it. Okay, so before we install OpenCore, we want to have Mojave in the computer as your boot drive. And if you have a 2009 Mac Pro, which is a 4,1, you want to update the firmware so it's a 5,1 before doing this process. And I have a video on that link in the description. And Mojave has its own firmware update that it does to the Mac Pro when you install it. So that is why we want Mojave. So our boot ROM is now going to be 144.0.0.0.0. Okay, and number two, we need to use a wired keyboard and mouse. You don't want to be using Bluetooth peripherals to do this install. And number three, you want a wired internet connection if possible because if you upgrade to Monterey, you're going to lose your Bluetooth and Wi Fi functionality. The legacy Bluetooth Wi Fi card is not supported in Monterey. So I have a video on how to upgrade to a newer Wi Fi Bluetooth card, uh, which I highly recommend because it also gives you the bonuses of having things like handoff and continuity. You're also going to need an Apple EFI GPU, meaning that you get the Apple boot screen when you're booting into Mojave. Because the first thing we have to do to install OpenCore is to turn off SIP, System Integrity Protection. Okay, so I set up a little workstation here to do the OpenCore install, and I've got my wired keyboard and my wired mouse, and I'm connected via Ethernet in the back. And you can see I've got Mojave in Bay 2. And I've got an SSD that's blank that we're going to be installing OpenCore on in Bay 1. OpenCore can go on any drive, and it can go on a USB thumb drive if you want. It does not have to be on the system drive. And I'll be removing Mojave once I get up to Monterey, and I'm not going to install Monterey over Mojave. I'm always going to keep my Mojave drive around as a fallback in case things get screwed up so I can always get my computer to boot back up. If you don't have it lying around and something goes wrong, you're going to be stuck. And as you can see, I have a RX 5700 XT installed. Let's pretend this is a Mac GPU. It isn't, and I'll explain this in a minute, but let's just pretend this is the GT120 or the original AMD graphics card like the 5770 or the 5780 that came with the Mac Pros. And none of those cards support metal, so when you are in Mojave, the computer's going to be quite doggy visually, moving around windows and stuff. But you should still get video outputted out of the display or DVI port. Okay, so now we're going to boot up into Mojave. Yeah. And as you can see, we get the gray screen, and there's the Apple logo. And this means we're booting off an Apple EFI graphics card. Or in my case, with the RX 5700 XT, which is not an Apple EFI graphics card, I have enabled GOP installed in my boot ROM, and this enables me to have the boot screen with a non-Apple GPU. 
Watch my video on this. It's a couple of videos back. I highly recommend it. It enables you to be able to get the Apple boot screen on a regular PC graphics card as long as it's supported by Mac OS. And our next step is to boot into recovery mode and turn off SIP. But before we do that, it is recommended to do a PRAM reset to clean out the cobwebs in your boot ROM. And to do a PRAM reset, follow these directions. But basically, you're just shutting down your Mac, then you're gonna boot up and hold down the command option P and R keys before it gets to that first boot chime. And then you wanna hear a second and a third and possibly a fourth boot chime. Then you can let go of the keys on your keyboard and your computer will boot as normal. Four boot chimes is recommended by Martin Lowe to do a deep cleaning of your boot ROM before you install OpenCore for the first time. So our next step before installing OpenCore is to turn off SIP. So we want to boot the computer up again, holding down the Command and R keys. And once you see the Apple logo, you can let go of those two keys. It will take a little longer to boot than normal. And once you get to the desktop, you're going to go to Utilities in the menu bar and select Terminal. And now that we have Terminal open, we're gonna type in the command CSRUTIL space disable. Then we hit Enter and we get the message Successfully Disabled System Integrity Protection. Please restart. So we now reboot the Mac back into Mojave and we can now start the open core install process. So we're going to talk about drive formatting first. And open core could be on a thumb drive in your USB port if you wanted to have it there, or you can install it on an internal drive. I would not install it on an NVMe. It will take your Mac longer to boot. It's better to have it on an internal SATA bay or on a USB thumbstick. So I'm going to be putting open core in SATA Bay 1 on a brand new SSD, which normally would come formatted in XFAT. But if you want to install Mac OS on a brand new SSD, you have to format it in APFS GUID partition using Apple's Disk Utility app. And of course, formatting a hard drive completely erases it. So make sure you're formatting the correct hard drive and you're not erasing your Mojave drive. And you should name the hard drive Macintosh HD, then hit erase. And now that we've formatted our hard drive, we can download Martin Lowe's OpenCore package. The link is in the video description. And you wanna grab the latest package 0.9.8. Okay, so now we've got our open core folder unzipped and open. The first thing we have to do is mount our EFI because that's where we will be copying the open core files to. And if you're not familiar with what an EFI is, you can look it up on Wikipedia, but it's basically a hidden partition on your hard drive. And this is where we're going to be copying the open core files. So to get to the EFI on our hard drive, we have to mount it on the desktop. And we're gonna use the Mount EFI app created by Mac Schrauber. And we're just gonna double click the icon and it's gonna scan all the hard drives connected to our Mac Pro. And there's a good chance you're gonna get a warning from Apple that this is not an authorized app developer and you have to go into your security privacy settings and allow apps to run from unidentified developers. So anytime you open an app that Apple doesn't like the look of or says it's from unidentified developers, you have to go through this security settings. You first type in your administrative password, then you go in and it says open anyway. That's what you want to click on to get the app to launch for the first time. And then from then on out, it will continue to work. So once you've gotten through the Apple security mumbo jumbo, we are now going to run the Mount EFI partition app to mount our hard drive's EFI partition. And this is the same folder, just a different view. I'm in list view now as opposed to the icon view. I double clicked on mount EFI, and as you can see, it scans all the hard drives connected to the computer. I only have two hard drives connected, so there's only two showing up in the list. And as you can see, it says bay one and bay two. It shows you where the hard drives are located in your computer. Very convenient. 
client. So I'm going to pick SATA Bay 1, click on that, and mount it. And you can see now a new hard drive has shown up on my desktop, and that's the EFI. It's actually a very small amount of space, uh, and it's a hidden partition. But thanks to Max Schrauber's tool, we used to use Clover Configurator to mount the EFI, but now we have this great little script, or app rather, to mount our EFIs. And now all we have to do is grab Martin Lowe's EFI folder and drag it onto the EFI. And boom, it's copied. One thing I want to note is if you mount your EFI and you see that there's already an EFI folder in there, that could be because you didn't reformat your hard drive and you've got an older Mac formatted drive like Mac OS journaled. Again, you want to reformat the drive before installing OpenCore. And if you're installing OpenCore on a thumb drive instead of an SSD, that can be formatted in XFAT. But when you open up the EFI, you might find that there is already an EFI folder in there and you can just replace it with the OpenCore EFI folder. So let's just familiarize ourselves with what's in the EFI folder. We have the boot folder and the open core folder. So the boot folder only has one file in it. The open core has a lot of stuff in it, but inside that folder is the config plist file, which we will have to edit before we install Monterey. So the last thing we have to do as far as the open core install is concerned is run the bless open core script. And chances are you're gonna get that same warning from Apple and have to go to your security settings and allow the app to run. So we're gonna hit okay. We're gonna to go to our system preferences again. We're gonna to go to security and privacy settings and on the first tab general, we're gonna click on the little lock icon and put in our administrative password. So we're gonna click okay on the warning message and that will bring up a new message in the security settings and we're gonna hit open anyway. And we get the message saying that OpenCore has been successfully blessed. And the reason you have to bless OpenCore is it tells your computer this is the drive you need to look at to load OpenCore when you hit the power button on your Mac. If you don't bless it, the computer is not going to know to go look at the drive where you've placed OpenCore. And that's it as far as OpenCore install goes. The next step is to install Monterey. But first, just reboot the computer and you will get to see the OpenCore bootloader for the first time. And you'll still be booting back into Mojave. And your boot screen is no longer gray, it's black. And it will take about 10 seconds before the Mac will auto boot into Mojave. Or you can just click on the Mojave icon and hit enter on the keyboard and it will immediately start to load the OS. Now if you want, you can swap out the GPU and put in your RX 580 or whatever you have that is macOS supported and you will now get the OpenCore boot screen. And now for our next step. Warning! OpenCore config.plist must be edited before installing Monterey and before updating Monterey. So now that we've got OpenCore installed, before we install Monterey and start that process, you can download it, but you have to do this before you start to install Monterey or you can get stuck in a never ending boot loop and have to start all over again. And the process is the same for installing Monterey from scratch, or if you're updating Monterey, you also have to do this. So I'm just going to play my most recent video that shows you how to make the changes to the config plist. Hey guys, today we're going to update to Monterey 12.7.4. We're going to mount our EFI partition that has open core on it, which is currently 0.9.8. Martin Lowe's package. We're using Max Schrauber's Mount EFI Partition app, which now comes in Martin Lowe's OpenCore package. And that scans all your EFIs and then makes it really easy to find which one has your OpenCore install. And as you can see, the second one from the top there says OpenCore Martin Lowe. It even shows you the version. So we're going to mount that and then we're going to open it and go to our OC folder and open our config plist to make our VMM flag modifications. Uh, security preferences can get in the way of this. 
You just have to say open anyway. Sometimes you got to put your password in there. I use BB Edit as the software to do my config plist changes. I'll leave the link to BB Edit in the video description. Okay, I'm just gonna jump in here and interrupt this. This is called the VMM flag edit, and I'm not gonna get into explaining it, but regardless, you have to go in there and change an A to a C, a capital A to a capital C, so that the line below it looks exactly like the line above it. Now, the way you find this is to start at the top of all this information and scroll down until you find this spot and it says C Puid one mask above the line that you need to edit. And if you're using BB edit, you can go up to the find menu and hit find C Puid one mask, type it in, hit find, and it'll jump right to this line. And that's why BB edit is a great app to use for editing the code here. And you can use Apple's text edit app to do this, but BB edit makes it easier. Okay, let's continue. We change the A to a C, so it looks identical to the line above it. And then we'll move on to update SM BIOS. We're gonna change true to false. Make sure to save your two changes and then reboot. So make sure to save your config plist and then reboot the computer and we can move on to installing Monterey. And double check your changes to make sure you did it properly because if you typed in something wrong, it can cause OpenCore to not be able to boot. So next up, we gotta grab the installer for Monterey. We're not gonna be using Apple's system update to download Monterey. We're gonna go grab it from Mr. Macintosh. He is like the authority on OpenCore Legacy Patcher, at least one of the top authorities on it who has a YouTube channel, but he also has a website where he's got practically every Mac OS for download, which is via Apple's servers. So we're gonna go grab it there at mrmacintosh.com. And you just wanna get the latest version, 12.7.4, click on the install assistant and let it download. It's about 12 gigs. Okay, so now we've got the install assistant downloaded to our downloads folder. So we're gonna double click on that and then we're gonna go to our applications folder and you will see install macOS Monterey.app. That's not gonna be there until you double click on install assistant. The install assistant is not gonna start doing the install. It creates this app in your applications folder, the install app. Then you double click on install macOS Monterey and it will start the install process. And of course you have to pick the disk that you want to install Monterey on. And you do not want to install it over your Mojave disk. You can do that, but I highly recommend keeping that for backup because if something goes wrong with OpenCore and you need to start over, you wanna have a Mojave disk lying around. So I'm installing it in SATA Bay 1. You can install it on an NVMe, on a PCIe card. I'm just installing it today on SATA Bay 1. And I'm not gonna show you the whole install process of installing Mac OS because I'm sure you've been there before. The only thing you have to think about is you're now using OpenCore, so it's gonna boot into the OpenCore bootloader first, then it's gonna boot into the installer, it's gonna reboot into Mac OS, and then it's gonna reboot again into Mac OS. And then and one more reboot and you will be up and running in Monterey. It may look like you're stuck in the middle of the install. You know, that line that goes across the screen. It may seem like you're just stuck there. Don't touch the computer. Don't shut it down. This happens almost every time you install Monterey from scratch. It'll all of a sudden just start moving again and then finish up. So be patient. It might take you, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes to get this install done. So be patient, let it do its reboots and let it do its thing and you'll know when it's finished because you'll finally see the Monterey login screen. And congratulations, you are now running OpenCore and an unsupported version of Monterey on your Mac Pro 5,1. But 
you're not quite done. There's one more thing we got to do, which is to revert the config plist back to its original state before we went and modified it. And this is basically a drag and drop operation. And then we want to go back and reset our config plist. And the easiest way to do that is to go use McSchrober's tool again to mount the EFI that has open core on it. And then we're just going to drag the original open core config plist that came with 0.9.8. Never use an older config plist. Always use the same version that came with Martin Lowe's package. Or just open the config plist on the EFI and manually change the settings back from the way we did it in the beginning of the video. But the easy way to do it is just drag over the config plist and hit replace. And you're done. And now your Mac will be running at full speed again. Uh, you do need to do this to get your Mac running at full speed. And then reboot and you're finished. So a couple of final notes. I know this was a long, laborious video, and actually I, I, it makes it seems like it's more complicated than it actually is. It's pretty easy, and you can install OpenCore in a very short amount of time. You know, it's a good idea to watch this video more than once before you go and attempt the install. And Martin Lowe has a readme file that comes with the OpenCore package. I highly suggest you read that and get an understanding of what OpenCore actually is and does, especially if this is your first attempt at installing OpenCore. And of course, alternatively to Martin Lowe's OpenCore package, you can use OpenCore Legacy Patcher to install Monterey on your Mac Pro 5,1. And you can also get up to Sonoma. It depends on what graphics card you have installed, whether it's going to be compatible or not. So you have to look at the OpenCore Legacy Patcher site and make sure that your GPU is compatible. But today I was strictly covering installing Martin Lowe's OpenCore package and getting you up to Monterey. So if you'd like to see me install Sonoma from scratch on my Mac Pro 5,1 using OpenCore Legacy Patcher, leave a comment. And I am officially a burnt piece of toast. Okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.